Now, you've seen the acronym before. If you haven't, I'll refresh you. It is a word that stands for several other words. Here's an example, the CAN plan. That would be an acronym of some kind. Or the trust approach, for example, something like that. Um, <laughs> nothing, nothing starts with you. I don't even really know what Saskatchewan means. I think you'll find that my acronym is a little more esoteric, perhaps, than the ones you're familiar with. But is one that I'm hoping will become a part of your daily vocabulary for this moment forward. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present to you here this evening the, <laughs> the MyFabMofa plan. I mean, just say it to yourselves, MyFabMofa, good. Oh, it sounds like a lullaby, doesn't it? And what does it mean? I will tell you what it means. It means make yourself feel awesome by making others feel awful. <laughs> How much more direct could I be? You want to see my first effort? <laughs> that. Um, learn how to tell people how much you really don't like them and have a lot of fun doing it, which uh, <laughs> is really hard to pronounce. Uh, I, I tried for a long time, never really figured it out. So we're going to stick with my fab mofa. When you are going to criticize another person, what you need to do is begin with one of several introductory phrases that make it sound like you're not trying to be mean, you're actually trying to help the person you're about to insult. That way you will get the most pleasure out of their shock and pain. That's kind of how this works. So I'm going to show you a list of phrases that will work very well for you. It is certainly not a complete list, just a partial list to hopefully help you get started. The first of them, two words I know you've used before, no offense. Now, now, let's be honest, we're all friends here. This is a lie. None of you has ever said no offense without being offensive. But the genius of this phrase is that, first of all, you can finish it with anything. And secondly, if the person you're talking to gets upset, it's their fault. Because <laughs> you're not trying to offend them, you know? It's airtight, people. There's a lot of phrases just like this. Don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> like there's another way to take it, you know? I don't mean to sound rude. Mm, yeah, you did. This is one of my favorites. This isn't going to sound the way I mean it. And you can really appreciate these when you use them like back to back. Like, sir, I didn't catch your name earlier. What's your name? Wally? Good. No offense, but uh, nobody here likes you. No. No. Don't mean to sound rude. We all kind of wish you'd stayed home. Don't take that the wrong way. Yeah. See, I have a ball. I didn't even know Wally, you know? That was a lot of fun. And judging from your laughter, you've all wanted to tell him that for a long time, you know? Exactly. That's the power, people, of the MyFabMofa plan. Now we have to talk about how to actually criticize people. And here, you want to basically remember what you learned in ninth grade composition. You want to be original and descriptive. You want to be specific. You want to hit people with something they are not anticipating, because you'll have a lot more fun and get a lot more pleasure out of doing so. And I'll show you right now why originality is so terribly important. I'd like you to turn to your spouse. Please turn to your husband or wife. Look them right in the eye and repeat after me, I don't like you. Now, you weren't actually supposed to do it. You were just supposed to laugh. But a lot of you, obviously, a lot of you need to be here this weekend. OK, very good. But you'll notice the reaction here is a little lukewarm. And that is not your fault. It is the fault of this sentence, because this is a very, very common sentence. You've said it a million times in your life. You've heard it a million times in your life. It lacks power. You want to be original. You get a lot more pleasure out of that. I will show you that right now. Turn to your spouse again. This is fun. OK, come on. Repeat after me. Don't take this the wrong way. But I hope you contract an intestinal parasite. It's a lot more fun. If the services are comparable and the prices are comparable, and they usually are, I don't care where I get it. The thing that's going to determine me for or against you as a customer, and the thing that's going to make me want to work with you or against you as an employee, are the small things that you can do that will make me feel more or less welcome, more or less respected with you. And if you're not totally convinced that these small things can pay big dividends, I want you to remember back to the first time you ever told your husband, or in most of your cases, your wife, that you loved them. This hugely emotional moment. Because you're 95% sure that she's going to say, I love you too, but not totally. 
And I don't know your story, but I'm guessing you remember it, that first time that you say, I love you to somebody. It's sort of a powerful moment. Then you say it once, and the floodgates open! And what's happened is that this sentence, like I said before, repetition steals the meaning from the things that we say. This sentence, which was once the most empo important, powerful thing you could say to anybody, has become something that you occasionally throw away. So imagine, the next time you see your, your wife or your husband, don't say I love you. They've got it. They've heard it already. They know. Say I adore you. Say I cherish you. I don't want you to change how you feel. It'd be ridiculous. Change one word. Changing habits, changing patterns of speech are difficult for us sometimes. We form patterns of speech because they're comfortable, because we know the outcome given a certain input. Not just I love you to your family, but professionally as well. I don't know what you say to the people that you work with on a regular basis, but I know it falls into one of five to 25 stock phrases. How's it going? How's your weekend? Good work, nice job, well done, way to go. Whatever you say, you say the same things all the time. And those phrases, because we've said them so often, don't really matter anymore. But if you change it this much, don't change the meaning, but the actual words that you use, excellent work, exceptional. You knocked that out of the park. I'm extremely impressed. It's not much, but people notice, and everybody needs it. Everybody needs to feel important to somebody else. And I've heard a lot of people talk about change, and they all talk about it in the same way, as though it is something you don't know how to handle. They're talking about it like, well, change is coming, you can't really avoid it, so instead of resisting it, you should just learn how to accept it. And they always say that, learn how to accept it, like, like you don't already know. And I think that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard anybody try to offer, because change is totally natural. You are not the same person that you were a year ago, or five, or 20. You won't be the same person in two, or five, or 20 years. Our country is nothing at all like it used to be. Nothing is the same. You're not doing your business in the same way as you were two years ago. You're not working on the same projects with the same people. And if you are working on the same projects with the same people, you're not doing it in the same way. You have some different equipment. You have different relationships, different relationships with those people that allows you to work, hopefully, more smoothly than you did before. Nothing stays the same. Businesses are never static. You've changed a million ways in your life and it's never bothered you. The only time it bothers you, the only time change bothers anybody is when we're told that it's happening. Then we all freak out. You don't have to learn how to change. You've incorporated thousands of changes into yourself all the time, continuously, seamlessly, effortlessly, in most cases not even noticing that those changes have happened. Now what I'm going to show you are creations of former MyFabMova graduates. Well, I really like you as a person, but your parents slipped into the gene pool while the lifeguard wasn't watching. <laughs> Clever take on an old theme, of course. I like this one. Did you get a new haircut or just an estimate? Growth.